Is butter better for diabetics? If so, how? Hey there, my fellow health enthusiasts. Are you tired of constant back and forth between the doctors on whether or not butter is good for you, especially for those with diabetes? Well, today we are going to dive headfirst into this controversial topic and find out once and for all if butter is truly is better for those living with this chronic condition. So sit tight, grab a cup of tea, and let's get to the bottom of this buttery debate. It is no secret that the butter has been a staple in many people's diet for centuries. Even ancient civilizations knew that a little bit of a butter could go a long way in keeping them healthy. So why? In this day and age, do some heart associations want to rain on our butter parade? Dr. Weston Price, who studied the diets of some of the most healthy people in the 1930s, found that the butter was a mainstay in, in their diets. And who can forget the isolated Swiss farmers who let a bowl of butter burn on their church altars all year long? If that's not a sign that butter is holy, I don't know what is. And yet, heart associations have a point, and I will come to that soon. So keep watching. Let's talk about what makes butter so good. And I will later talk about what makes butter also so bad. And how to make butter good for you at all times. So stick with me. You will not regret. <clears throat> Actually. This video may save your life, so stay put. The United States, I would say, went from a country where heart disease was a rare occurrence to one where it became the Grim Reaper's number one hit. And what changed in between? Well, a lot of things. But one in particular caught researchers' attention. The amount of butter consumption per capita. Yes, you heard that right. As the amount of golden delicious butter plummeted from 18 pounds per person per year to 4 pounds, heart disease skyrocketed. But don't be fooled, my friends, butter did not cause this avalanche of heartache. Quite the opposite, actually. Butter is chock full of nutrients like vitamin A, which keeps our thyroid and adrenal glands healthy. By the way, we have a new thyroid and adrenal support supplement at our website at sugarmds.com. And in turn, the vitamin A in butter and other things help your circulatory system ticking like a fine-tuned Swiss watch. So you know what they say, a little bit of butter makes everything better, doesn't it? And apparently that includes your health. But I'll come to that, why it can be bad for you. So who knew that this creamy indulgence could actually help your body absorb and use cholesterol and other fats properly? If that's not enough to convince you to spread it on thick and nice butter with a bunch of antioxidants that protects your precious arteries from free radicals, think about it. We are talking about vitamin A, vitamin E, selenium. There's more selenium than fish or wheat germ. So go ahead, indulge in that buttery goodness guilt-free. Your body, thank you for it. Also, who knew that butter could be a secret superhero in the fight against free radicals? That's right, folks. Butter isn't just a delicious topping for your toast, which I'll tell you not to do in a second, but it's also a cholesterol powerhouse packed with antioxidants. So say goodbye to those highly processed vegetable oils and margarines that have been sneakily spiking your cholesterol levels. According to the Medical Research Council, men who switched to butter were half as likely to suffer from heart disease. Who would have thought that the key to a healthy heart could be found in a simple part of butter? It looks like it is time to add the sneaky superhero to our grocery list, right? But it is still controversial. Hear this. Back in 1940s, studies came out claiming that too much fat could lead to cancer. And suddenly, margarine, once a food for poor people, 
became the new rich kid on the block. But here's a kicker. The media didn't tell the whole truth about these studies. They conveniently left out the fact that saturated fats causing cancer were actually the fake, partially hydrogenated kind of that is found in margarine. Butter, on the other hand, was just minding its own business, doing what it does the best, tasting absolutely delicious. So let's give a butter a break, folks. It's not the bad guy here. It has just been caught up in some buttery drama. But let's talk about how butter can be bad for you. Okay, let's be real. Butter may be the love of our lives, but we cannot ignore the fact that it has more calories than we would like to admit. And if you are one of those couch potatoes, then you are in for a big belly surprise. Visceral fat, also known as the Grim Reaper, will knock on your door and murder you with insulin resistance. Adding insult to injury, if you mix butter with carbs, you are signing up for a speedy fat storage service. However, I have a solution that is both delicious and healthy. So put your organic butter on your veggies. That way you will enjoy both the creamy goodness and the divine taste of fresh greens. Your blood sugar and insulin levels will remain level-headed and you won't have to worry about storing butter as fast as the flesh runs. What about olive oil, you would say, right? Well, when it comes to the age-old debate of olive oil versus butter, I have to lean towards the Mediterranean marvel that is olive oil. Don't get me wrong, I love the creamy goodness of butter as much as the next person. But if I am going to be dipping my bread, and I really want that bread in something, it would rather be the heart-healthy elixir of olive oil. Plus, let's face it, olive oil just sounds fancier, right, than the butter, but it comes down to health and sophistication over comfort food any day. So, thanks for watching. You've made it so far, which means you must have enough butter and willpower to resist insulin resistance. Well, that is quite an accomplishment, but seriously, taking care of your health is important and we appreciate you tuning in. So go ahead, treat yourself to a pet of butter, in moderation of course, and keep making smart choices for your well-being. Thanks for watching SugarMD. Remember to subscribe, go to our channel, go to our website, and actually get a newsletter for personalized information, for personalized emails. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.